Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is like a family reunion. And as I was telling somebody, a good family reunion, the pleasant type. So we're so glad to have all of you here with us today. And it's been 36 years since we started MPAC. 36 years ago, the budget of MPAC was $20,000. You're looking at the budget. Now, the budget, alhamdulillah, passed by the board of directors of this organization is $2.6 million. And you're going to help us raise that. We are in the business of making Islam a positive, integral, enriching element of American pluralism. To see that Islamic values and American values have no dissonance, that they are one and the same. And as was stated in the panel during our plenary, we just can't be concerned about our own issues. We can't be talking about Islamophobia all the time. If we don't care about the common good, how to benefit society, that is not real Islam. A thriving Islam is an Islam that contributes to the betterment of society for all people. That is why we are concerned about our democracy. And so MPAC is designed to build a brain trust in both Hollywood and Washington, D.C. so that better decisions are made and better stories are produced about Islam and Muslims. But more importantly, when we talk about democracy and the threat to democracy, we want to see a pluralistic democracy, not an ethno-nationalist agenda taking over our democracy. And that is what is at stake today. And so when we look at the screen, we have conducted several, there they are, several democracy forums in Washington, D.C., in Chicago, in Atlanta, in Houston, in Sacramento. And we've had members of Congress like Marie Newman, Ro Khanna, uh, and we've had state senators who have actually worked to defend the right of people to vote in their states, in Texas. And that is at the front line in terms of defending democracy. We are working towards uh, countering the narrative of white supremacist um, uh, violence in our society, and that is why I serve on the Faith-Based Security Advisory Council for the Secretary of Homeland Security. Because first and foremost, we want to defend the right to worship of every human being in America. And I served in that council under President Trump, and I'm serving on the same council under President Biden. So MPAC is designed to be bipartisan in everything we do. And what is more important is that we have the rule of law established in our society, not the rule of the powerful or the rule of one. So we've uh, had uh, an interesting convention with uh, President Biden in the White House. And at the White House, the forum is entitled, The United We Stand, United Against Hate-Fueled Violence. And the star of that uh, forum that day was Raiz Bouyan. I don't know if you remember Raiz, but he spoke here on 2000, in 2014. He is the subject of a book called True American. He was shot in the face by a white supremacist and lost his vision, but went to Mecca and decided to forgive the person who shot him because, in his words, there's too much hate in society. Reis went to plead for the clemency of that person in a Texas uh, death row uh, and, and pled for that individual. And what he said at the White House resonated with everybody. He said, I lost the vision in my eye, but God gave me the vision 
to heal the wounds of hatred and make peace with people. And at that summit, we had a record number of Muslims in the White House. Over 20 representatives of Muslim organizations attended. And you have like, people like Imam Muhammad Majid, Ra'is. We had Suzanne Barakat, who is a champion of the hate crimes against three individuals, some of whom were her relatives in North Carolina in Chapel Hill. We have Rashad Hussein, who's the ambassador at large for international religious freedom. And just five years ago, we never imagined having that many Muslims represented in the White House. We never imagined having that ability to say, we are here without intimidation and fear. So that in and of itself is a great achievement that we now have representation and inclusion in the highest office of the land, the White House. We have published a counter-narrative to the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory. The Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory emanated from France. It was directed against Muslims, their Algerian and Moroccan communities. And the conspiracy theory is that immigrants are going to come over in France and take over the white uh, race, and there's a white genocide. That theory now has spilled over to the United States and was the driver behind the attack in Buffalo and in Pittsburgh and here in Poway near San Diego. MPAC now has worked in, uh, in developing a paper and is working with a coalition to say in one voice that the Great Replacement Theory is a conspiracy and the real uh, happening in our country is the great enrichment. In other words, the enrichment of all of us being a pluralistic democracy, enriching the tapestry of our democratic institutions in America. So we are working with other organizations, such as Engage Action, the Muslim Illinois Civic Coalition, the um, American Muslim Health Professionals, and the Institute for Social Policy Understanding. In fact, we had a conference uh, a few months ago in, in May where we all uh, talked about these issues. And alhamdulillah, I want to report that we got $200,000 in grant funds from the Cal uh, Community Collaborative Initiative to do a national policy conference with these organizations for 2024.